Jabra Rahma, mm -hmm. the mount where people. I mean, it's not necessary to go there. Yeah, it's it's just so happens that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave his sermon on the on the day of Arafat there, that many people go. Yeah, and it's watching people so desperate mm -hmm. for some mercy. This once uh, in a in a lifetime opportunity they've had. It's watching people, and Subhanallah, I asked one of the sheikhs about this. He said, you know, one man came to Hajj, and they asked what dua did he make. He said the dua he made was he wanted what everybody else was asking for. Because it's such an emotional experience and people are there and that is when you start to realize what the Day of Judgment will be like. It is, you know, your hair stands on your back. It's such a phenomenal experience watching people and then you suddenly start to realize how minute you are. When you look at Mount uh, Jabal Ahmad from a distance, all these white dots in the distance, you realize how small you really are. Um, so yes, yeah, it's, it's a phenomenal experience. So, t so tell us, what would you like to say to our viewers about about getting their dua done? There? Today, I think, as I said, you know, if you yeah. want, to, if you're not going to Hajj, you've been before, you've got some money lying around, a hundred pounds is all we're asking for from ten people. Ten, nine people now. You people. could be in a position where somebody who is desperately wanting to go to Hajj, they can't afford it. You are going to send them on Hajj, and they're going to make dua for you from their heart on the day of Arafat. Sure. You will never forget this in your life ever. You might not be here next year, desire to inspire them, might not be around, Ikra might not, we don't know. So the opportunity, we have to take the opportunity Definitely. while we can. This is the opportunity now in these next 20 minutes. Yep. After that, the opportunity is gone. It's finished. That's that. So 10 people text you, phone the studio, come on live if you want. A hundred pounds from 10 families, that's all we're looking for. Yeah. And that person, the 3,000 pound is there um, to send a person for a journey of a lifetime. That's it. Yeah. That'll be amazing. Definitely. Brother Bella, what would you say to that? No, well, a second what he just said, Alhamdulillah, you know, you, you've got to be part of it. I mean, I've been to Hajj twice, and SubhanAllah, not until, I mean, all your life, you've sat there and you've, you've probably watched on television, you've probably seen pictures of the Kaaba, not until you've gone and you've actually looked and seen the Kaaba, I mean, there's nothing in this world, Alhamdulillah, that can actually you know, overcome it. It's just brilliant. I think, I think one I of the questions explain. that Nassim sent to me a couple of days ago, oh, was was, really. what's oh. been the most surreal experience? That is oh, surreal. The atmosphere, once you get into the Haram itself, is, is just, it's different from outside. Once you get inside and you look at the Kaaba, it's just oh. a, absolutely amazing. And on this issue of, uh, I was saying, it's not about the money. You know, whether 10 people pledge that £100 or not, that person is going to go to Hajj this year. It's about sure. invitation. And I remember one of the brothers from Glasgow who, one of the most active workers, unemployed for most of his life, despite his qualifications, went through, you know, discrimination at work, etc. Yeah. Really, I never thought this brother would ever go to Hajj. Yeah. And he got a phone call the night before from a, a, a youth group who had been funded by the Saudi government to invite 10 people to Hajj or something. And his name was selected. Oh, yeah. so, yeah. so, you know, this, is, this journey is for somebody of that nature. And I think those 10 people out there who are watching want to be part of it. It's Definitely. an opportunity. People should be falling over their feet to get to this. Definitely. Because on the day of Eid, you will know that your Eid in Glasgow or London, Bolton, wherever, will be special. Definitely. Very special. MashaAllah, yeah. And just going back to that, um, obviously, um, you've been to Hajj, uh, MashaAllah, many times. Allah SWT has had your name on that ticket and you've gone. And, and Allah bless that Auntie G who's shopping you took home yeah, that day. Knew she, I'd love to find out. If somebody yeah. can re think back 12 years ago and their mum got a lift and she was up by this strange guy <laughs> with a lot of music blaring. <laughs> <laughs> he's not a strange guy, he's a weird looking guy, let me tell you. I'd music blaring out of his car. <laughs> and look at that, Allah SWT takes him to his abode 10 times for for assisting this sister. Yeah. So, so we don't know, there's £100. You just helped a sister there, an auntie there, with, with some shopping, with some it's messages. It's a power of dua, to be It's honest. a power of dua, absolutely. So now think of that same, that same formula on Hajj. Can you imagine it? Yeah. For £100? Yeah. Come on, guys. Let's pick up the phones. Let's get these text messages. Split Keep it. Keep the text messages coming Keep in. coming. Definitely. Two at £50, one at £100. You got four people in a family. I understand that we need to go for an emergency break, but we'll be back just in a few minutes' time. And then what I'm going to do with the production team here is I'm going to use a gambit to get extra time. Okay, guys? So we'll just see you shortly after the break. Assalamu alaikum. Subhanallah.
Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Desire to Inspire. This is our last segment. Um, we have, if you've just tuned in, we have Brother Naim Raza from Glasgow and Brother Billa from Bolton today who are here to share about their Hajj experiences and their stories with us. Welcome back, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. So, yep, um, Brother Billa, I just want to know a little bit more about your, the charity work you're doing and a bit more about your projects, please. Well, well one of the things that we've been doing is... Uh, uh, is we've been we've been over to Gaza as uh, Brother Rizzi said earlier on. Uh, we went Rizzi together, and Alhamdulillah, we're going to be going again. Apart from that, we're actually doing events where we've we've already done a couple, two, three this year already, where we've taken up to 400 brothers who uh, up mounted. We've got up mountains for charity, okay. raising money for SWAT for Gaza. Yeah, we've been raising money, and what we're going to do in the future is, inshallah, we're going to keep doing more events, and we're going to try to inspire brothers, stroke sisters, to come to events that we do, organization where, where they would normally won't get involved with the mosque. Mm -hmm. yeah, and we'd like them to come along and come and join us. Yeah, mm -hmm. So we've got parachute jump, hopefully I'm looking into, we have a, I believe a 60 mile bike ride, one of our brothers organizing, we have a football tournament, inshallah. We're going to have many, many charity events. Yeah, And we want to bring people who wouldn't normally get involved, we want them to get involved and be inspired by it. And, I've got to tell you, when we went over the second time, well, sorry, the, first, well, the second time maybe on the mountain, we had nearly four, five hundred brothers from all across the UK, a different age group, and we had one bro brother who came with me from Bolton who was blind, and we had the, our web designer, a marshal from Islam, Paul, Brother Shahid, yeah, and we had him come along. We had many people from different groups, and they all came up, and we all bonded together, alhamdulillah, and we all, four, I mean, you should have just seen the view, four hundred, Five, maybe 500 Asian people, a different all Muslims, all going up. And another beautiful thing was when we all came down off the mountain, yeah, on the the topmost lake, everyone's performing wudu. We're all performing wudu. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're in the cold water. We're all performing our salat. Yeah, you know, if you just seen that view, it was absolute, and that was what made it worth it. Mm -hmm. As well as the money that we raised for the brothers in Gaza and Swat, yeah, alhamdulillah. But that was just yeah, a spectacular view. I can't explain, and we will encourage others, inshallah, to come along as well. So if anybody wants to get involved with some of the work that you're doing or wants to start something, how would they contact you? Well, you can contact us through our website, again, which is www.islamicposters.co.uk. Uh, you can come through to that, you can Google it, you'll come up, and we have our contact number there. For information for anybody who wants to start it up, alhamdulillah, do it, but what you've got to do is stay focused. Don't start, you're like, there's some people who are doing what I'm doing now who have been inspired, but they're charging money. Yeah, all right. I mean, I, I don't know what they're thinking, but they charge you money for it. Yeah, I'm doing it feasibly, lad, but people are charging, and we don't want people to do that. We want people to do it free and do it for the pleasure of Allah and Allah alone. Mm. Because you won't get paid here, you're going to get paid up there. Yeah. Think about it when you go up there, that bank balance is going to go, yeah, it's going to be big, yeah. alhamdulillah. Thank okay. you, thank you very you know, much for that. But I was um, speaking earlier on, before you came on, and you'll probably remember this, but it was to the, the time I asked you to design a poster, I mean, I know you've designed many posters for me, um, from collecting blood to whatever, but I remember you asked you to design a poster for Medicines to Gaza, and I was going around all the mosques and all the, uh, even the churches, um, basically collecting uh, medicines, I put containers there, and it was medicines for Gaza, and people were donating all their medicines, unused medicines, and I asked you to design the poster, and you designed the poster, and then you went and you started to you collect medicines, Absolutely. and you said, come down and collect the medicines, Rizzi, you need to bring one van, two vans, and just get going up and up, and when I came down to collect the, the medicines, I looked in your house, and your living room was full of medicine, the hall was full of medicines, oh the stairs going up was full of medicines, and I went to the bedroom, and there was no <laughs> bed was covered in medicines and bandages and, you know, elastoplasts, and I said to you, where are you sleeping? You said, I've got nowhere to sleep. I'm sleeping in my parents' house. <laughs> I mean, was that not something? 